Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics today with a really unique project. This is called the Braided Twist Table Runner and we're making this out of Wild Poppy from Timeless Treasures. This is such a cool project. This is a longer video. Go warm up the coffee, grab a snack. We're going to be here for a while, but I'll tell you what, it's going to be worth our time together today to learn how to use this amazing tool. This is the braided uh, twist tool. This was designed by Cheryl Phillips. And I tell you, when I've been making these table runners, this is the second one I've done. Um, I'm blown away with her mind to have designed this tool and how this project goes together. So she gave us a lot of options inside the book. Hey, by the way, this is a combo. When you buy the book, it comes with a template. So I love that. It's not two separate things. And of course, you'll be able to make this and she gives us lots of variations. So let's just look through the book real quick before we dive into the steps of how we make our own braided twist. And you've got lots of choices. You can make these really a longer, shorter, and she's even done things that have 45 degree wedges. She's added some applique. There are so many things and options inside in the book. Let me get to some other pages that show some colors. You can do a short one with just three, uh, three of the little kind of sections. Um, other ones looks like fun for a picnic. So let's just keep progressing through that. I, she gave you all kinds of ideas and different fabrics. Something I'm sure will resonate with you. And look how she did these. You can even do these in a more circular pattern for maybe a tabletop or, I mean, you could even do this in Christmas fabric and potentially have a tree skirt. Just throwing that out there as a possibility. Not sure how I'd make the slit, but just the idea. Lots of possibilities. All right, like I said, we need to break down the process as we go. I will do lots of overhead camera shots and try to zoom in so you have an absolute understanding of how to use this tool. So when you make your own runner, you know exactly what to do. Limited kits available if you love the Wild Poppy collection. We have more kits coming out in other fabrics or maybe you have a stash at home. Very easy to kit this if you are gonna be doing the three fabric version like we've done here, the fabric at the two ends, those are called the end caps. You'll need a half a yard for that fabric. And the two prints that are the toss floral, actually the one print that's the toss floral, that's in the two sections, a half a yard again. And then the fabric that's in the middle is just a fat quarter and a yard for the backing. So I love that it's very easy to put this project together, very easy to select fabrics and of course, how amazing they'll look in a variety of different colors and combinations. Let's jump into the book and let's talk about um, the introduction. Of course, we're giving you some ideas here, some of the notions you'll be needing. I'll just speak to those as we're using them. Uh, they're giving you the basic runner. We're going to skip ahead actually to page 12 because what we're going to be doing today, what we did do, is called the basic variation. I wanna draw your attention to this right here where we have three fabrics. We have the two ends that are our A1. We have the B, that's gonna be our toss floral. And I'll bring out this, this is a little bit of a mock-up we did here so that that way you're not having to refer back to what's behind me. So of course we have our A1s here, which we're calling those our end caps, that's important. Those are pieced differently than the other parts of the runner. Our B, which is our toss floral here. And then we have our A2, which is just right there in the middle of this one little pack floral here. So the first thing I encourage you to do is just cut everything up front, right in advance, like you do any project you've done in the past if you're a quilter. So I will um, just bring out some of those fabrics real quick, and I'm gonna show you how we'll be using the tool. Now, because there is a little bit of a curved piecing in here and those two end caps, I would encourage you to use some sizing. Anytime we're doing a little bit of curved piecing, having a, just a little bit of sizing can just help stabilize that fabric because of course, we're now cutting on some bias. So for our two end pieces here, out of our A1 fabrics, which is our full large poppy, we would cut two pieces that are eight by eight. And I've just got the one here. I have the other one off to the side. 
And I have another piece that's 14 by 8. So those are would be done and cut into the side. Now notice how our A2 and our B, that's these, we're going to just be cutting the same size, 14 and a half by 8, 14 and a half by 8. So they're all going to be really cut the same size. At the very end, we have some fusible fleece. By the way, we have that available on our website. Uh, you can grab that fusible fleece, fusible on one side. I love it. Works out great. I'm not using basting spray. It's so fumy. So I really love to use the fusible fleece. You will be cutting eight pieces to a seven by 14. So that's what that will look like. Once you have all of those things cut out, let's go ahead and roll back into our book and we'll go to our top right of our page five. So we'll be drawing your attention there. And right away, we're going to start talking about this ruler because we jump into it. So I'm gonna, I brought a piece of black fabric. I want to talk to you about the ruler. I shouldn't say it's a ruler, it's really a tool is what it is. Out of the package, this can be quite slippery. I added some no-slip grip dots from the Gypsy Quilter to the back. In fact, mine has already got the grips on it, so we'll just use that. I just added four of those. That's because I don't want to miscut or have anything slide away. With the grips on the back, I can't even accidentally move it while I'm cutting. So that's something I'd just love to encourage you to potentially add some grips to the back so you don't make a miscut. Referring back to our book now, I'm going to leave that piece of, of black fabric there. Let's look at the lines here. Let's just study that. Let me turn my little um, fabric so you're seeing this from the overhead camera. Let's study our tool. We will be using this in different, uh, different ways at different times. So notice here we have our A line, two A lines right here. We have our B lines right here, and we have some fleece cutting lines. So I just wanted to point out to you that uh, we have these different places and we use them at different times and I will emphasize that. And you wanna pay particular attention that you're lining up at the right location at the right time. Many times we'll be cutting on the outside of our arc, but sometimes we'll be cutting on the inside of the arc. For the inside cuts, I found it difficult to navigate that with a 45 millimeter rotary cutter. For that reason, I also have my 28 millimeter with me for that inside cut because I need that to be very precise and I couldn't quite achieve it uh, as well with the 45 millimeter. Again, we'll speak to that when we use it. But our very first cut that we are being asked to do here is curve piecing, the illusion of layering. Make end cap size with a quarter circle inserted into our rectangle. Don't worry about that. I'll explain that more in just a little bit. And you'll only be making two of these, of course, because we have the two ends of the project. Just lay that here for you to reference. This is important that you cut the fabrics at this stage with everything facing right side up. And she emphasizes that in her book. So we'll place the braided twist tool onto an eight inch, that's this one here, square right side up, aligning the fabric edges to the tool's A lines. So that's what they're showing here. And then we're gonna cut along the outside curved edges. So we are lining up with this A. So let me move my black out of the way. So let's find our our A. So I'm just kind of moving this around. Hopefully you can see this is my A and here's my A and you can see now why I have my spinning mat. And this is going to take a little bit of space. I tried this on my smaller 12 inch spinning mat and it was just too crowded, especially with the larger pieces coming up. And so this is why I have the 17 inch spinning mat. Now I'll be cutting to the outside of the arc, so I am confident to use my 45 millimeter, but I might as well just use the 28 just because I have it handy, and I'm gonna be using it soon on a different cut as well. So I'm lined up here. 
we'll just cut just a little I'm trying to be so gentle to not move anything <laughs> there we go and we'll just put that aside and off to the side we go all right so you would repeat that with the other eight inch square and do the exact same step okay for our next cut because we've gotten our we've done this here we're down to our two rectangles place the braided twist tool onto a four and a half by eight inch b rectangle so again the b is that tossed print in fact you know what i'm going to do let me just label these for you here because that that's our A and our B, and that's our A and our B, and the K is our backing. All right, so we'll, we won't worry about the middle just yet. Let's just focus on that. So we're not gonna touch this one yet, but this is our B print. Again, make sure you're right side up. And now we get to use the B part of our tool, which is really fun. And it says right side up, aligning the fabric edges to the tool's B line. And here's what's different about this time. You're gonna cut on the inside edge of the tool. And of course, we're gonna do this for both of the B pieces. So let's line up the B. We've got a nice 90 degree corner right here. And it lines up so nicely. And that's why it's really important to cut your fabrics good and square right in the beginning. This is when the 28 millimeter became necessary for me, that 28 millimeter rotary cutter because that's a difficult turn to achieve with a 45. Okay, now that we have that, let me put the tool aside. We'll move back into our book. And now we're gonna, uh, step two is the end cap sides. Pinch just the curved edges in half of both A and B. So this is our A, we talked about that. Anytime you see this kind of grainy, kind of gritty part in her book, that's representing the back side of the fabric. So she's having us bring our two edges together and wants us to do a little pinch here. And if you know what I noticed, that these line, don't line up, that alarmed me. I was sure I had cut it wrong when I made the sample. And sure enough, she said in her book, sides are not the same length. So if you're seeing what I'm seeing here, and you should, uh, when you're making this at home, that's normal. That's part of the magic of this tool. Now you can pinch here or give a press. And I'll go ahead and give a little press because I want to have a good, strong line. And let's just put that aside for the moment. For the next piece here, our B piece, we have that situated where it's uh, vertically. And then we're just laying that piece over. And again, she's wanting us to pinch. I will give a press. Now match the A and B pinched folds right side together and pin. So let's look at that. Let's, so right side together. And she's just wanting us to pin that location so let's go ahead and do that so we don't move our spot bring the each end of the curved b pieces to the a's and pins so she wants us to pin these two ends and that's going to feel a little weird to us at first and do the same over here because those have to match. If I have not done a lot of curved piecing, but for the, for the little bit that I have done, I know that you have to match your middles, you need to find your ends, and then make everything else in between fit. Now, uh, one of our other team members here, as I was trying to kind of arm wrestle the fabric a little bit and, and um, pin it, she suggested using um, the Soline glue pen as an option. So I want to throw that out there for you. I've actually tried both ways. I like the glue pen. Um, it's a lot less pins because it's glued.
But if you choose the route of pinning, and you don't want to do any glue, this is water soluble, and it can stay in there forever, there's no reason to remove it, you're just going to want to stretch that fabric and kind of just finesse it and pin very frequently and try to keep it so that the pins can stay in position while you're sewing and they don't have to be removed. Now, let's say that we want to go ahead and do the glue option. So I just wanted to show you that as well in case that's an option you want to take. Make sure you keep your glue line, your glue inside of your seam, your um, allowance, so that you don't have any glue showing outside of that. And I might just reinforce that with a pin. And this is how um, this was recommended to me, and I thought that was pretty cool. It reduces all the pins. It held together very nicely. You just kind of stretch that and then just kind of squeezed it together. Kind of a cool idea. So I'll keep doing that until both sides are smooth and then we will sew a quarter inch seam allowance. glue dries so quickly, we have to move fast. So maybe the answer is a combination of pins and glue, but we need to get this part right on the money for some nice curved piecing. And you only have to do this part twice, which is great. The rest of it, there's not really any of this type of curved piecing. Yeah, I feel a little more confident, I think, with a combination of the glue and the pins, just to make sure. I have a different types of pins in here because we're really going to be using a lot of different types of pins, especially as we start adding our fusible fleece. So you're seeing I have a combination of pins on my magnetic pin cushion. I have the shorter, uh, patchwork pins, which I love for uh, things like this. And then, of course, I have my flower head pins, which will come into play a little bit later. Let's go ahead and sew our quarter inch seam. sure everything is nice and smooth. If it's not, or you feel there's a bubble, definitely stop. Let's see how we did. You know, if we didn't get it right, we'll grab our seam ripper and we'll just do it again. That looks pretty good. And she has us press toward, let me flip that over so it's looking just like this. This is the backside again. She wants us to press toward this portion and that's good. I can see that's where it wants to go. That's always helpful <laughs> when we're pressing in the direction that the fabric seems to want to go already. And you would repeat that with the second wedge and the second piece of this. And again, no more of that once you do that a second time. Um, 
no more curve piecing after that. I'm just going to trim off some threads. Okay, moving on. Let's move to the next part of our pattern. Let me put that aside. Our step three for our cutting is actually our fusible fleece. This is an important part of this project, and that's what gives it that nice body. And I love that I don't have to do long arm quilting in the end. Then they mentioned that right on the cover of the book. No quilting, no binding, and no handwork. It makes this truly a, about a half day project. Um, and you don't have to send that out for long arm quilting, so it may, also makes it economical as well. Okay, they mentioned for the fusible fleece, with the eight rectangles that are exactly seven by 14, we're gonna fold that in half with the edges aligned, and they want the fold at the top as they're noting here. With the fold at the top, align the braided twist tools fleece line to the edge of the fleece. So let me show you that. I wanted to show you each step of this so there's absolutely no guesswork. So let's look at our tool again. We have our fleece line. It might be easier for you to see that on the black because now that I've got white, it's gonna be hard to read. So let's just point that out again. Our fleece lines are here and here. We're just gonna be bracketing that fleece. And we'll refer to our um, there's our fold. So our fleece lines are here, like this. Let's get that matched up exactly. Just like that. Okay, and then again, this is going to be one of those inside cuts. So let's just double check, we're not missing anything. Remember the fleece line is placed along the raw edge, not on the fold. Cut the fleece along the inside curve. Cut carefully as this piece creates the smooth circular shape of the half circles. So if this is a really important cut on each time. And then this part is uh, extra. So that's, that's the semicircle that they're talking about. That's what's going to come into play to be, um, in, that's basically our batting, is we're using fusible fleece instead of batting. So let's go ahead and put that aside for the moment. And you will be doing that with all eight of those pieces, exactly the same step. Let's move on to the pieced end cap sides. And remember how a lot of the other cuts, we've been right side up. I want to point out here on the piece end cap sides on this step that you are now wrong side up. So make sure you're flipping that or this step will go wrong for you. Um, and we can see our arc is right here. Check the bottom edge of the piece rect rectangle to make sure it's straight. So let's look at that. I would say it's fairly straight. If necessary, trim slightly to straighten. And you know, I think I am gonna grab a ruler real quick and straighten that. Let me just lay that along my line actually and see if we're off just a touch. I, I may be off by, oh, maybe a 16th of an inch, but I'm gonna trim it anyway. Let me just grab a ruler and let's trim it. I wanna do this in real time with you so that you're seeing how I would do that if I do trim that up. So I'm just squaring it up on my mat, getting along this edge here. I love the ability to trim up a, a little bit, you know, if my, especially with curved piecing. You know, you've got a lot going on right there. It's nice to have the ability to, to square up just a touch. Okay, 
So she gave us the liberty to straighten just a little bit, <laughs> and then we'll place the tool on the wrong side. We've got the wrong side up, and we will place this on the curved stitch line. That's another thing I want to show you. Let me bring my black piece of fabric back. There's this place right here. It says place on curved line, curved stitches. This is what she's talking about. We're going to align the bottom, the very bottoms of our tool and have this be on our stitch line. So let's hope our piecing resulted in that lining up in that location. Let's check that out. Oh yes, it's a good day. So you can see how I could shift this this way, but I'll be off of my curved line. So I don't know how well you can see that from overhead, but my dash line is sitting right on my stitch line. But I also need to make sure that I'm at, at the bottom of my shape. And that's why she wanted us to square that, trim it just slightly. So I'm going to move that just a breath. This is where I'm going to do a full cut from right to left. And I'll be using, really using the spinning mat for all its uh, glory here. I will use this bigger one. Actually, no, I'm going to stick with that 28 millimeter. That's been serving me well on this project. And of course, you repeat that with your other uh, end cap. So now that's what that looks like. Pretty cool. Again, I, props to Cheryl Phillips for inventing this. This is just absolutely incredible. Um, and that's what this one is right here. Now for this piece, this is our A. Remember, we haven't touched that yet. This beautiful piece has just been waiting for its moment. Well, that moment is, is here. And looks like they have us with the wrong side up. I'm not sure that it would matter, but let's go with that wrong side. I'm just, I'm not even questioning that. <laughs> We're going to take the full tool, lay that on here, and we will cut around the full arc. That step is right here. All right, that's now put us where we are able to move on to our step four, our end cap assembly. So we have our wrong sides up, just like this. And let's just move over. This is, once you get through this part, the the rest of this is even is even simpler. But even this step, if we work on this together and you focus in on this, we'll get the overhead camera. We'll get this part done. It, that that step really intimidated me until I was able to work through and figure out what why I was doing that step. To make each end cap, you'll need two half circles, a solid one and a pieced one. That's what we have here. Two end caps are used for each runner or placemat, regardless of its length. We know that. Those two. We will fold the A circle in half at the fold to find the center and mark that fold. So I always like to give a crease because I don't want to miss that. Finding the center accurately on this project every time is key. I'm going to, I'm going to mark that spot real quick with my friction pen too. Okay. Fold the A circle in half to find the center, mark the fold. The center of the A and B cap, uh, end cap side is the same. So what they're saying is right here, this is the center of that location. With the right sides together, we're going to align the center marks and pin. 
Now, if you just put this one on top, and we know we're starting from this point, we didn't necessarily need to mark that, but it's a good visual check to say, yep, notice how where that thread is and where that mark is line up. It means we're on course, we're doing a good job. I'm gonna put a couple pins in, and what this next step is going to include, line the center, sew from the center to the bar. Okay, we're gonna sew from this point, literally have your needle down, and she makes an emphasis, set the needle here. She wants us to start a quarter inch in, and on that, so on that seam right there, you are going to stitch from here, a couple stitches forward, back stitch to that point, and then go all the way to the end and back stitch again. It's very important that you don't start after that, above that or below that. You want to be right on the mark on that. She does make quite an emphasis about it. And as I work through the project, I understand the importance of that as well. So let's go do that right now. And see how I came up at the wrong spot? Don't even start. <laughs> We're, we, if you can just hand crank that down to its location, so you're starting right on that line, that's what you want to do. And we're right there. I'm going to take a couple stitches. Now I'm going to go back. Okay, and now forward a quarter inch. Be on the mark with that. Take that pin out real quick. Just want to make sure this is lined up. Because this is going to make a full circle once it's done. Okay, I know that seems like a weird step, and hey, you're right. <laughs> but it results in an awesome table runner. So let's look back here. Um, we did our back stitching at the beginning and at the end because she says, she makes a big deal about this, back stitching at the start and the end of the seam is critical. So just, if you had, didn't do that, go back and get that done. You need to do that because the stitches will be stressed when the whole thing is turned and literally twisted. We will clip exactly at the marked center at that quarter inch point. Clipping should not extend past the quarter inch seam. Clip before pressing. So we need to do that right now. And I know it's going to feel weird but to, to clip in all the way to that seam, but we need to do that. So I'm going to clip right there. And what that will do for us is it will allow this seam to press open. Now this will just overlap each other at the top, and she talks about that. Press the seam allowance open. The unsewn center edges of the A, B uh, end cap will overlap each other. This is normal, and I know it doesn't look right, but I appreciate she gives us a lot of visual reassurance through her diagramming and through words to let us know that while we're quite convinced it's wrong, she's assuring us that it's actually correct. So that's appreciated as well. And we'll press that open, and then let's go look at our book again. Make sure this is matching the site picture inside her book. So we have our arc here. Our seam is pressed open, and yes, we can see that's overlapping. You will do that for a second time, and then go ahead and put that aside. Over here on our two end caps, because now we have the front, but we need to have the back. The back of our table runner is this beautiful poppy. I love this one. One of the things I wanted to mention that I, I skipped when I went over here, and remember we took our A fabric, this one, we had that on there, and we put our tool on our 14 and a half by 8, and we just cut all the way around the arc. What I should have told you to do at that time is we keep doing that with other fabrics. We can just cut that round and make those semicircles. In fact, she talked about it here. 
So I'm just going to backtrack just a touch to the bottom of page six. When we cut this, they wanted us to do of the half circles, four of the A, two of the B, and all of our back pacing, which is the K. So we would have eight of these, okay? So that's, you're probably like, where did that come from? We were just repeating the same process with our rectangle, putting our tool on and cutting all the way, making sure our bottoms were at the very bottom and cutting all the way around, okay? So now that you know where those came from, we will use two of those and just like we did, we will repeat this process. The only difference is now we need to figure out where that center point is. I'm going to put a press in there. Remember how we had our, that was our center. But just like I marked the piece on this side, we're going to find our center. I'm going to mark it to be absolute certain. And we will repeat the process. Starting at this place, reinforcing, coming down, reinforcing. We'll come back. We'll clip in the quarter of an inch to that line. And again, we'll press that seam open. So I'll be right back. Let's clip. We will press open. And just like before, kind of have that one that that what she's showing us here that just overlaps. That's natural. That's supposed to be like that right now. Let's turn that page. So now we will have our two pieces. We have our, this is our K, this is our end cap. We'll have that now right side up. And with this part, we're now right side together. So let's focus on this right here, we'll make sure we're lined up and we're pinning well all the way around. You can see they, they fit well, but I want to right away pin this part back here. I know those need to come together. I'm going to pin that. And just keep pinning all the way around. And we just sew with a quarter inch seam, and she does say exact, so I'm going to do my best to be exact, a quarter inch all the way around, and then we'll move on to the next step. So I'll continue pinning. I'll go sew that, and then we'll move to our next step. Okay, next step here, let's turn that uh, right side up. Fusing the fleece, so we, we're here, we, we're at this step, we've sewn this together. Fusing the fleece, follow the manufacturer's instructions for applying the fleece. Uh, place the fleece fusible side down onto the wrong side of the A, B, end cap rather than the backing. It would fit on this, this is the backing, but they've, she's very specific that she wants that done on um, this side. 
Check to see that the fleece is tucked into the bottom corners under the seam allowance. And, oh, let me back up just a touch. The fleece should be close to the stitching line, but not cover it. So when I first came to this, I was like, well, am I, am I, am I going to be toward the center? She wants it to be close to the line, but not covering it. So looking at that, that kind of puts that right about there. And what she's talking about with here is it makes contact with that seam. If that's the case, just tuck it underneath there, just like I did. I kind of rolled that back. I have had the best luck with fusible fleece when I actually use it in combination with steam. It seems to make the best contact for me. And that's why I also love my wool pressing mat. It just works so well with steam. You may already have your favorite setting, but I just find it to be no problem to use the seam, uh, the steam. All right, let me repress that seam open. And we will repeat that for the other side. Let's make sure my fabric is good and pressed. Oh, I've got some pins in there. I definitely don't want to secure those inside my table runner. And we will do the same. Just make sure you definitely have the fusible side down. I've done that before. That was an absolute mess. I thought that this was, that that, that sticky was down and I made contact with my iron. And I spent about an hour, maybe a little longer, cleaning that iron to get that off of there. So learn from me to not do that. So again, we'll just, just to almost touching the stitching line. She says that to um, just touching it should be close to the stitching line, but not covering it. So I'm going to scoot that down just a touch. Tucking that under and let's steam again. Okay, so let's let that cool. We're moving on to turning. We're going to turn the end caps right side out. We get to finally see what this is going to look like. I'll use my point turner for that. It does say to run your hand inside the pocket to open and smooth the outer edge, and that works really well. Of course, the point turner works well too if you'd rather use that. And I'm going to move our large spinning mat out of the way so we can just be focused on our project. Again, if you're inclined to use that curved part of the point turner, this is a great chance to use it to get everything smoothed inside. Pretty cool, huh? I love it. I've never done a project like it, and that's, that's always fun to learn some new things. It's easy to get in the habit of doing those types of projects that we've done over and over because it's easy and we know how to do it. But it's fun to challenge ourselves to learn something new like this. And we'll press that out from both sides. Once we have that, oh, we're going to open this just to expose this and kind of keep this out of the way. And I'm, I'll use one of my flower head pins. That's why I have that, that on here. And you can see she wants us to use an eighth of an inch just to close that edge. Now I'm going to press that. Let's put a few pins in there. We need to close both of these with an eighth inch. So I'll just go do that real quick. making sure that you're just starting where that cut is and not anywhere past that. I'm 
Now, while we're here and up close, I just need to do the same thing to the other side where I'm now trying to keep this one out of the way. And so I just reverse that since we're here on the close-up photography. Make sure everything is nice and lined up. Insert some pins. I think I can hold that with my fingers. And again, I'm just, it's kind of delicate in there, keeping that out of the way. Sewing an eighth of an inch. Okay, so we have our end cap done, and you would make the other end cap just like that. Of course, always just making them kind of at the same time. And I want to give you a point of reference so that you know what's going to be coming up next. So looking at the table runner behind me, the part that we just made goes right here. And of course, that flap tucks underneath this flap, but they're already secured, so you're not seeing that. But I'll roll that back. So that's what you've done. And then, of course, down in here as well, let me turn on this side. That's where this is, is functioning. So I want to show you that so you know what else is kind of left over. The, this is done. Now we're going to focus on this semicircle. It's a half a circle. It's di diving in behind here. This is another semicircle, and this is a half a circle, and so is this one. So the reason I bring that up is that's what's next in our book, and I want to address on the top, uh, let's see, page 9, where she calls this uh, the letter A. And I think the reason that she calls out the letter A, and of course we've been talking about our two ends with a large poppy as A, but if you go back here on the opposite of page five, notice how that center portion she also talked about as A. This is now our A that she's referring to. And we're going to call these just our end caps. That'll help us stay, keep our minds organized for the next steps to come. So when she talks about on page nine, of laying out our piece A, place an A onto a K circle. And the A, that's this one here, uh, we're placing that onto the circle, right sides together, sewing around that. And I actually, what I, I've already done those, but I have the B, same step. Let me just show you that with the B. So just right side together sewing around the circle. I tried to do as much as I could ahead of time, but not do so much that I was skipping any steps. So let me just go ahead and do that. We're going to do the same process for both pieces that have this, as well as this fabric. And I did those ahead of time. So let's just do one together real quick. And I should have done both of those and left one of those out, but it's the same process. We're just going to uh, sew around that outside edge by a quarter of an inch. Let's do that real quick. Now, like we did before with our fusible fleece, that's what all those semicircles were that you created was for this here, a lot of that here. We're again getting near that stitching line. Make sure you've got the sticky side down, the glue side down. You're not having to clean your iron the way I did that time. And again, let's just steam that. biasing it toward that stitch line, but not crossing it. 
and let that cool just a touch and we'll turn that right side out moving that through we'll use our point turner we'll just take that back to the mat and make sure the edges are lined up and let's give that a good press and you'd repeat that with all of those just like that and then we'll pin and we'll close that with an eighth inch seam and you do want to make sure those edges because they could be shifted like that you could see that they could shift just make sure that they are stacked directly on top of each other and we'll sew that close by an eighth of an inch and I've already done that on those Once you have that semicircle sewn, our next step in our pattern is to find the center of that and clip in by a quarter of an inch. And the easiest way to do that, and the way that I did mark those others, or cut those others, I should say, was I just folded that in half exactly. And then I just reach in there and cut the quarter of an inch, just like that. It's the simplest way for me to have found that quarter inch. So you'll repeat that. I've cut those all. They're already trimmed and ready to go. Now, we are ready to lay out our table runner. I need space. So I'm going to create some space. We're going to turn the page. Actually, before I turn the page, she mentioned something in the book. I want to call your attention to it and give you this option because she gave us this option. She talked about folding in half, making the cut, and to make two of the AK circles. We're calling this now AK, K being the backing, and B with K being the backing. So that's what we're referring to. I went ahead and just marked our diagram so that we know for the next step we've got BK and AK and we've got our end caps. If you're feeling inclined to label that, she mentions that right here. There are some labels. And she also has some labels included inside her pattern, so that's an option for you as well to use. Let's turn the page. And now this part bent my brain more than any other part of this so far. So I'm, I have limited space on the set. I will have to turn this process, uh, the project, to lay out and move that in front of me this way. But of course, for you at home, if you're able to keep the book oriented and lay that out, that's ideal. But for our limited space, we will go ahead and turn this this way, and we're going to turn our book. And there's our top end cap. I'll do as much as I can um from this orientation so she, notice how she recommends right away we kind of pin this out of place what we're going to do let me give you the <laughs> let me give you the flight plan of what we're going to do we're going to assemble the left side of our table runner and then we're going to come back and deal with the right side of the table runner and then we're going to do the twist and make it all work together and we're going to have our table runner so just follow along some of this is going to be right side up, and some of this that's in the light blue is facing down. I want to call that to your attention as well. So how you lay this out is 100% key to it coming out correctly. So I've pinned that out of the way. Hey, I might get lucky and be able to push that up there. For my KB, K because the K is on the back, and remember we said our B is this one right here. So we have, this is our wrong side up. We will lay that piece till it's right in the notch right there. 
right inside that notch. And so the fabric is just stacking right on top of each other. And notice where this piece ends and the other begins. There's that slit. We already cut that. For the next piece, which is also RB, I think I will be able to lay this out vertically, which is fantastic. I prefer that. This piece, which is our B fabric with the K backing, and it's right side up, we will lay our piece at the slit right there. And where it ends is it's at the end of this piece, and it's at the slit here. And then for our bottom cap, so we have that one with the end cap facing down. So we need to do that. So let's just confirm though. Yep. So we have that in our cut, our slit. And we've, we're rolling this back. And we're going to pin that. And that's going to end right in that notch right there. So let's just review that. And we're going, once we're sure we're correct, we'll pin this, pin, pin, pin. That's where the flower head pins come in. And we'll sew a quarter inch seam right inside that notch, all the way down, ending right here. Don't go past it, don't go shallow, stop right at that location. So our end cap is right side up and we have our arc here. This piece we know that's our backing. So the K is up with the B down. The B is up and the K is down. And then our end cap. Yep. So we'll pin that well and then I'll sew our quarter inch seam allowance. And I am definitely having those flower head pins facing downward so that I don't poke myself. So I'm go, I'll go ahead and just keep pinning and making sure everything is positioned just so, and then I will be at the sewing machine to sew our quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I know this looks looks like it can't possibly be right, but it is. And we'll move now to this part of our page. And we actually only have two more pieces to put into position. I found it easiest to actually start by placing, you, you could start down here, which is where I started, with our AK piece, starting at our slit here. Now we want to create a little bit of a gap. Notice there's this gap here. That's because when you get ready to sew this side down, this side needs to be out of the way so you don't accidentally sew that closed. So we need to kind of scoot that out of the way. And that notch, we're going to line up. Notice at the end of this circle is where my slit is. My next piece, KA, so the K meaning the K is uh, the wrong side, or the not the wrong side, but the backing is right side up with the pretty poppies facing down, lining up at the slit, ending there. And notice this time, this is going to go underneath my end cap. And that end cap will come right there at my slit. And we need to pin and pin well, pin very well, just like before.
Now you can imagine, because I need to now sew this, it's like, how do I access that? For that reason, she says, rotate the entire piece to access the presser foot, putting the top end cap, that's our top and that's our bottom. We're going to switch those. So the bottom is now here, and that's remember, that's the backing side up, that's the bottom side up, and that's our top. What that does is just put that in a more natural position for us to access the presser foot. If you are inclined to pin any of this out of the way, do whatever you need to do. We just need it to stay out of the, out of the uh, track of our sewing machine. All right, let's go sew our quarter inch seam. Okay, we are moments away from having a table runner. And you're like, how is that possible? <laughs> it is. Okay, orient this. We're now over on page 11. We're gonna do the twist here. Orient that so that the top um, end cap is here and that the one that is the wrong side up is at the bottom. So this, well, it's a, it's a four, actually a three-step process. Number one, starting with the bottom end cap. Number one, we're just going to twist to the right, just like that. So that's already, things are already looking better. Step two, twist the one and two to the right together. Notice how this is the back side, the back side, the back side. Third step, twist again, all three, one, two, and three. We'll twist them all together. And there we have our table runner. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I know, I'm just like, this woman is brilliant. This Cheryl Phillips is, uh, is, is quite impressive here with how she's created this. Over on the top right of page 11, now what do we do? Of course we display that, but as you can see, these aren't really attached to anything. They're loose and we could untwist that. Now, if you anticipate um, that you're never gonna move this thing, you don't necessarily need to do really anything else. But as I showed you before, these are actually adhered together. And she talks about that here in our um, step uh, on the top right of page 11. Press both sides, of course, we'll be doing that. Um, working on one intersection at a time, slide and lock those together. So she's talking about these little intersections right in here. If you have any fabric poking out, you'll just kind of, kind of fussy that and kind of lock those intersections in to just move that. If they're off by so I can see that coming out. I'm just gonna adjust that. You'll just, adjust it to where you're happy, everything's pressed and adjusted. Now, uh, let's see, tuck both seam allowances out of the way, never allowing the seam allowances to be fused. Okay, and what she means about the fusing is one of the ways that she kind of locked these in, she talks about fuse the first inch next to the intersection using a quarter inch wide pieces of fusible webbing. We have small amounts of the heat and bond light. This is a one and a quarter yard uh, amount of that. Plenty of fabric to do all kinds of table runners with. So that's one option is she put just a little bit of fusible in here. And then once she was happy with that, she said once the intersections are secure, fuse the remaining curved edges to the underlying pieces on both the front and the back. So you could put more of the fusible webbing in here, maybe kind of a stripe in here and the same on the back. I kind of did arcs up that were about one inches wide. So mine kind of starts here and ends here. And I did the same on the back. Another idea, if you love decorative stitching and you're really good at it, you could certainly be doing some decorative stitching and adding some really, really nice glamour to the project as well. 
So, hey, I know that this has been a video like no other. I've never done a project like this with a tool that was that incredibly brilliantly designed that created such an incredible uh, project and how fun to display that. And I can't wait to make another one yet in completely different fabrics and it'll be just amazing to do the process again. So thank you for hanging in there with me today. It's been a longer video. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you soon on another video.